Night of the Comets, a 1984 sci-fi horror comedy from a director Tom Eberhart. The movie opens with movie trailer voiceover guy explaining the comet's trajectory. Since before recorded time, it had swung through the universe in an elliptical orbit so large that its very existence remained a secret. A few days before Christmas and the tail of the comet is going to pass by the Earth. A group of scientists hide in an underground bunker since the last time the comet passed, all the dinosaurs went extinct. However, since most of the world is filled with idiots, the rest went outside and had comet parties. This is like all the dumbbells in Independence Day who greeted the aliens with welcome signs and they greeted us with hot death. At the El Rey Movie Theater, Mel, the movie theater manager, is trying way too hard to sell these stupid comet headsets. I'm showing you the top of the line. This is the best we have. This is 950. Now, this is Bloody hell, I'll give you the 950. Can I just have some popcorn? The beautiful employee Reggie is playing Tempest. She notices that someone named DMK has taken up a spot on her leaderboard. This is really annoying. She goes to the projection booth to see Larry, who's trying to sell a bootleg of a movie. Think I'm going to miss this comet thing for a lousy hundred dollars? Okay, one ten's a little better, yeah. Whoa, tough negotiator. Ten whole dollars. He bribes Reggie to spend the night with him in the projection booth instead of going out to see the comet. So what do you say? I'll give you fifteen dollars? Are you kidding? We spend the night in here, we end up making it, and you give me 15 bucks? 15 bucks? What a bargain! Reggie calls her sister Sam to tell her she's going to be staying out all night and to pass it along to her stepmother. Sam gets into an argument with her stepmother, who gives her a wicked right hook. You were born with an asshole, Doris. You don't need Chuck. Down goes Frazier! Larry's trying to have sex with Reggie, and she confuses his penis by talking about Superman. Superman can see through steel. <clears throat> no, it's one thing he cannot see through. That's lead, you nerd. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to maintain an erection while discussing superhero attributes? They come to the agreement that the projection booth is made out of steel, and since Superman can see through steel, he could very well be outside watching them do it. The comet passes by in a spectacular fashion, which causes everyone outside to start making goofy faces. The next morning, the sky has a weird red tint to it, and all the streets are empty. Well, except for this guy. I know it's juvenile, but it looks like this duck cuts a gasser. The streets are littered with clothes covered in red dust. Reggie wakes up the next morning in the booth. She gets startled, which makes her shirt magically appear. God damn it! What? What? Larry goes outside and gets mauled by a zombie. Reggie decides to go fix her high score. Where the hell did these other video games come from? Okay, okay, okay. She decides to go outside but accidentally locks herself out. She's locked out and no one else is around. Well, except for this guy. She goes around the back and runs into the zombie who killed Larry. What is he eating, his liver? Reggie beats up the zombie and then her stunt double drives away on Larry's motorcycle. Reggie drives all the way home without seeing any other people. Well, except for this guy again. Reggie comes home to find Sam getting ready for cheerleader practice. Sam tells her she spent the night in the shed outside. Reggie goes to take Sam outside, and that wasn't there a minute ago. Samantha? So if the comet reduced all flesh to red dust... Here's Doris! This is all that's left of her, this is dust! Look! Here's Chuck! How come the hamburgers are still okay? The girls hear a DJ on the radio, so they head to the station. When they get there, they find out that the DJ is actually just a pre-recorded tape. While at the station, they run into Hector. Wait. Why don't you just let my sister go, and maybe you and I can work something out. It's cool, Hector. She's willing to deal. The going rate is 15 bucks. Hector explains he's a truck driver and spent the night in his cab. Reggie deduces that the people who survived are the ones who spent the night in steel structures. Sam starts playing on the air and gets a call from some people in a research facility. The scientists discuss whether or not to go and get the girls. They then explain what's going on with the people turning into zombies. Drying of the body fluids. Oh, get to the point, Oscar. Transition We've heard this stage. a thousand times. Ultimately, what about the dust? Ultimately, there is nothing left but calcium dust. After waking up from a nightmare, Sam goes to the bathroom to clean up. Now we're talking. Ah, damn it, it was a double nightmare. Since their father was in the military, Reggie and Sam go to a weapons locker to get some machine guns. So where are all the shell casings? 
Hector goes to San Diego to see if his mother is still alive while doing his best Eric Estrada impersonation. While at the house, he runs into a little kid zombie. Why didn't he just lock the door? The kid chases him around the house and Jesus, just give him the $2 already. Hector escapes out the window and runs away from his truck for some reason. Back in the science lab, they're slowly succumbing to the comet sickness. Even after the apocalypse, what do girls want to do? Go to the mall. The stars are open! What is this, the karaoke version of Girls Just Want to Have Fun? While the girls are having a shopping and dancing montage, they're being watched by Adam Carolla. The mall goons go to capture the girls. If bachelorette number one isn't out here in half a tick, I'm going to ice bachelorette number two. They bring the girls to the stock room, and why did the lead guy change clothes? And how come his face is so much more messed up than it was a minute ago? The scientists show up and rescue the girls from the mall goons. They take Reggie back to the lab, while Sam and two of the others stay behind to wait for Hector. The helicopter flies away, and, oh look, some of the zombies have taken up jobs as window cleaners. Since Sam has a rash, the scientists think that she might be infected. White uses a serum on her to knock her out and shoots Oscar. White then takes Sam back to the radio station to wait for Hector. She explains to Hector how the science lab was infected. We were exposed. Not a lot. Just enough. They left the ventilating ducts wide open. The fans going. Since she's dying, she decides to kill herself. Back at the lab, Reggie is being interrogated. Have you ever had hepatitis? Have you ever dated Tommy Lee? The scientist's true nature is revealed. They're draining the survivors of their blood so they can make a serum to save themselves. So this is where the augers came from. Hector and Sam make their way to the facility. They trick one of the guards to get inside. Reggie knocks out one of the scientists and escapes into the lab, but is recaptured. She could beat the crap out of a flesh-eating zombie, but not a couple of scientists? You'll just giggle, and then you'll feel a little sleepy. <laughs> That's right. And when you wake up, do you know where you'll be? Where? With Santa Claus at the North Pole. In fact, you'll live with Santa Claus for the rest of your life. Listen, lady, we're not that stupid. Hector shuts the power down and Reggie fights the guard off. She rescues the kids and Sam shows up. They escape topside and Hector rigged the scientist's car to explode. The next day it rains and washes all those decomposed bodies away. Reggie's trying to rebuild civilization. You may as well face the fact, Samantha. The whole burden of civilization has fallen upon us. What's that supposed to mean? It means we do not cross against the light. She's also acting like an overbearing mother. There's nobody here! See? We're talking ghost town! Great car. Thanks. I have 23 of them. You want to go for a ride? More than you know. We don't know anything about this guy. Well, maybe you shouldn't have thrown all your guns away. What's your name? Danny Mason Keener. Danny Mason Keener, okay? Oh, it's DMK from the arcade. Ah, the hell with rebuilding society. Let's play football in the street. The movie was filmed mostly in downtown Los Angeles for about $700,000. Quite a bargain for a film this ambitious. By comparison, it opened shortly after The Terminator, a film that was also considered low budget, but that cost $6.4 million. The working title of the film was Teenage Comet Zombies, and Sam gives it a nod while broadcasting in the radio station. I'll be taking requests from all you teenage comet zombies. The fog in the movie was bee smoke and the red dust was brick dust. The picture of Reggie and Sam's father was actually a picture of director Tom Eberhart. The Mercedes stopped on the overpass also belonged to the director. The zombie makeup in the film was very impressive, especially when you consider the budget. It was done by the great David Miller, who did the Freddy Krueger makeup in the original Nightmare on Elm Street. The super cute Kelly Maroney played Sam. She originally tried out for the role of Reggie. In a recent interview, Joss Whedon explained that part of the inspiration for the character of Buffy the Vampire Slayer was based on the character of Samantha. Buffy? Catherine Mary Stewart played Regina. The chemistry between her and Sam was terrific, and they genuinely felt like sisters. Many of the deserted outdoor shots were filmed early on Christmas Day, and the others were at random intervals when there were no cars or people around. They did their best to angle the cameras so that no other people could be seen, but every now and then a person or a car would sneak into a shot. Since they were on such a tight budget, they couldn't afford reshoots, so they just had to make the best of it. The movie has a lot of ties to other films. 
Robert Beltran and Mary Waranov both starred together in Eating Raoul. Kelly Marooney and Mary Waranov both starred together in The Glorious Chopping Mall. In the theater, there's a poster for Valley Girl, and in the radio station, Sam tosses aside the soundtrack. Michael Bowen, who played Larry, starred in Valley Girl. In the movie Dudes, starring Catherine Mary Stewart, there's a description of a scenario that sounds a lot like Night of the Comet. In 28 Days Later, there's an homage to Night of the Comet. When Jim is walking down the street, he finds an empty Mercedes like Night of the Comet. The poster in the projection room is for a movie called Red Dust. The poster on the door of the theater is for Death Race 2000, starring Mary Waranov. The director was a big fan of Waranov, so he let her write all her own dialogue. The mall scenes were shot in the Sherman Oaks Galleria, which was used for many movies, including Valley Girl, Chopping Mall, and Fast Times at Ridgemont High, which starred Kelly Maroney. In the movie Hard to Die, Kelly Maroney was billed as D. Mason Keener. For years, Maroney and Eberhardt wanted to make a sequel. They had producers lined up, but the whole thing stalled because they couldn't figure out who owned the rights to the film. When they finally figured out MGM owned it, Maroney approached them with the offer to buy the rights so they could make a sequel. Even though MGM is doing nothing with the property, they still refuse to sell. In the original script, Sam dies, but they changed that before they started shooting. The movie theater is the El Rey Theater at 5515 Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles. It's still open to this day, and it looks pretty much the same on the outside. This movie is terrific. It embodies the charm of the 80s mixed with the inherent fear of the apocalypse. It has the feel of a 50s sci-fi film with more modern sensibilities and humor. The movie's proof that you don't need a massive budget to make effective sci-fi horror. You just need a solid script, a cast with good chemistry, some ingenuity, and you can take a little and turn it into a lot. Having Kelly Maroney in her underpants, that helps too. Crazy? I just don't give a fuck! <laughs>